called the songbook, and it's divided into two little sections. Once I played Pygmalion to the Queen of Hearts, a spoon bent out of shape, but no matching socks. Voting turned out right in local precincts. The incredible shrinking man, war of the world, sedate, the earth stood still, the blob, point the way and I'll go, single me out and I'll follow. A mother reprimands a child on a swing, the names of seasons, animals, a knock on the door, the boat no longer seaworthy, lost at sea, with no one aboard. I bend down to tie my laces near a fire hydrant, like a dog. The day begins with light and ends in darkness, but I am not awake. And you are only a dream. Oh, who are you who comes out of nowhere and remembers my name? A door in the wall that no one saw before suddenly opens onto a garden where men and women carrying parasols sip coffee through broken straws, and it looked like all the colors of the rainbow had attached themselves to the undergrowth, and the shrubbery was lit from behind by invisible balls. The coat of many colors was draped over a chair, yellow cab parked in the rain outside the mosque. The morning was like any morning, the bridge sagging under the weight of moving vans driven by movers with trusses, the sky peppered with its first coat of spackle, a large, a barge circling below, a delicate brushstroke just attended. All the acorns have fallen in one place. You can gather them in your apron and scatter them on the road an avenue of moonlight among the ivy shirt tails. I thought, I, I thought that I would live an orderly life, but instead I made a mess, for which I have to admit I'm not contrite, so don't even start. The opposite is true. The opposite might always be true. People say something and then a minute later something else. The clouds are barely move, moving, but when you look at them again, they're gone. Words are like shadows covering the truth. I said that it might be true, that it rings true, that it didn't sound true. Trees are alive, but inhuman. Often we stand in their shadows. Even dead things cast shadows, stones, or mountains. I said something that might be true, a state of non-being. Dogs began barking to frighten the strangers who rubbed their thighs on the ivory statues of sailors while women who looked like sirens spread their pinafores over mounds of granite and punched the air with their fists, exposing their orifices to bewildered drivers. You had your chance to say something, but the moment passes, a face you can remember with no details, stayed in bed all day, reading Gone with the Wind, another version of happiness between piss and shit. Okay. This is called Written in Stone. It's important to have an opinion about something before it gets too late and the world, your immediate surroundings, blows up in your face. But if you move too far from the point of origin, there's always a chance you'll get lost. And then you'll need to ask someone directions. Which way is up and can I buy my ticket on the train? The conductor comes around and collects everyone's money. There's the chance that if you fall asleep, someone will rifle through your suitcase and take all your prescription medication and some of your underwear and socks. An extra pair of socks comes in handy on winter nights, even a pair of socks with holes in them. If you don't have any socks, then a pair with holes is better than nothing. Don't ask me about the underwear. As far as wearing someone else's underwear, you must proceed at your own risk. Meanwhile, the dining car is open and the ice is melting on the lake. The last time I went ice skating, I fell on my back and hurt my wrist. I wanted to impress someone with my athletic skills, but I ended up sitting on the sidelines with my arm in a sling. It's not the worst day, sitting in the shadows like a wallflower while everyone else is having fun. Eventually, someone will approach you, a total stranger, and ask you to dance. You can smell the tobacco on his jacket and a kind of lilac-scented cologne as you bite into the flesh on the side of his neck. Soon, the dance will be over, and he'll offer to make you a cup of hot chocolate or something. There's always a something that follows small talk or a dance, and at this point, you must show your true colors. You can hold him at arm's length or push him into the line of traffic, a homicide <laughs> made to look like an accident. <laughs> okay, I'll read a couple more. It's called 
the lights out. Someone's mother might be calling you home for dinner, a long table with a maid and a large spoon for the soup. Now you can downgrade thinking to a black and white photograph and a song on the record player, Hold On, I'm Coming. You found it in the attic, hidden in the corners, where everything gathers dust like everything you ever left behind until the closet door opens and we fly like birds of a feather into the great unknown. Then the record changes and we put our feet up on the table one last time before going to bed. Somewhere there's a bed and breakfast just for us, as in the song Somewhere from the cast album of West Side Story, Don't You Know? I'd like to say, just call me and I'll be there, but I can't. It's not a good idea to make promises you can't keep, as another song goes, but at this point the narrative breaks off and the audience heads to the exits. We have a long drive, so wish us safe voyage. Patches of ice float down the windshield in slow motion. As soon as I finish my sentence, no, don't interrupt me. You can leave. New Travelog. I stumbled out of the bushes to see a deer drink from a pool. I climbed into the hills above Berkeley, one step at a time. I went to Prince Edward Island, where Anne of Green Gables' face is on the license plate. A hawk or a condor flew over our house. I bought a carton of smokes at the duty-free shop in Anchorage, took a second all in Frankfurt, and woke up in New York. I bothered my friends with my troubles. I was never not alone. I postponed pleasure until it was almost gone. I stared out over the North Sea, waiting for rain. I wandered through the red light district in Amsterdam in the middle of night. I rode on the back of a motorcycle over a mountain on Christmas Eve. I floated on my back in the ocean at Maui, stared out the window of my hotel room over the rooftops of Florence, took LSE in Paris, and sat on a bench in the Luxembourg Gardens, rented a hotel room in Liverpool, but couldn't sleep. I missed my flight from Madrid to Lisbon, found an apartment on the Panhandle, and drank tea in Golden Gate Park. I was caught stealing at Safeway. I could never return. A Chinese acupuncturist came to my house when I threw out my back and couldn't move. I woke up in an apartment on Fifth Street and listened to the roosters crow on someone's roof. I visited her in her house overlooking the ocean, and she let me in. I put out my hand to touch you, but the bed was empty. I wheeled a stroller down an icy New England street, waited under a canopy in the rain, but she never came. I stood in front of a classroom with paint stains on my shoes, called the suicide hotline, but no one answered. I dropped everything I was doing and ran into the street, drove a car with faulty transmission until a fire started under the hood. I ate Indian food on a balcony in Cape Town. I sang karaoke in a bar in Tibet. Something I meant to say comes back to haunt me in my sleep. I turn the key in the lock and call your name. Her face appears out of nowhere, making a shadow on the page. There's only one stone, and it weighs a ton. I'll read one more poem. Um, called The Congo Line. It would seem that I was holding your hips from behind and that you were swaying to the music which was coming from the other room. The door to the room was open, but no one was entering or leaving. It was a type of party where people drifted in, stayed for a few minutes or a few hours, and then went home. I had the feeling that I was already home and that I was holding onto your hips from behind as we danced around the room with our eyes closed, bumping into the furniture while the music played on. Then someone caught me from behind and held onto my hips with hands that resembled claws. I could feel his breath on the back of my neck as we circled around the room. There was someone in front of you, an old man, your hands on his hips, and as far as I knew, there was someone in front of him, a young woman with hair down to her waist, and that he was holding onto her waist with his withered hands, and that there was someone in front of her as the line of dancers snaked around the room and onto the balcony where the moon was shining on the tops of the trees in the garden, and you could hear the sea in the distance, the foghorns that seemed part of the music, a new instrument, woodwind or strings. You could hear the voices of the people singing in time to the music as if, as if they had migrated from another planet and were trying
trying to get the most out of the pleasures of the new world in which they had landed almost at random out of every possible place in the universe. It's a pleasure to dance as much as it's also a pleasure to stand on the sidelines and observe the bodies of the people on the dance floor without feeling envious or sad as if something happened when you were a child to make you act the way you are now. So whenever anyone asks you to dance, you shake your head, pretend you're too drunk or tired, without ever measuring the potential pleasure of putting your arms around a stranger and leading him or her across a dance floor, as in the case, or in the case of the conga line, actually pressing your whole body into the back of another person as if you were fucking that person from behind, for instance, as some people like to pretend they're doing while they dance, as if the idea of dancing wasn't far removed from sex, that it was like a kind of prelude to going to bed with someone, and that this was the possibility you were denying yourself, so well versed were you in the art of denial. You never realized that you were cashing in your chips before the game even began, writing your cards on the table in the shape of a fan so that one card partially obscured the one behind it, as if the other players were supposed to be impressed by your fucking hand. Two pairs, I hate to tell you, won't get you shit in this world. It was late in the day for dancing or anything else, and there were shouts of man overboard from the bottom, from the boat on the horizon, but it wasn't you sinking fast or flailing your arms above the water while the sharks circled around you, and the music was just a humming now from the depths of space, from the eerie corridor between the moon and the sun and the rest of the planets. It collided with the stars which were shrinking inside their own mini-universes, showering sparks and embers onto the receding hairline of the entire astronomical chart as much as we're able to understand of whatever's out there while taking into account all the worlds beyond this one that no one knows about which, but which are like shadows of the world as it exists today, the shadow of the body of the stranger as he hovers above your bed, the shadow of the lamp on the desk looming on the ceiling like a third hand, all the gestures of love warmth and friendship that mean nothing and everything, the hands on your waist as you circle the room and the other hands making shadows on the bedroom wall, the shadows of the 